Right, so this is a quick video of how to motorise one of these cheap bead rollers. So originally you buy like this section here um, and it comes with this hand crank on on this end here and you would just manually turn it which obviously to rotates the bottom one of these and you put your metal through and put your swage line in uh, which is all well and good but obviously trying to turn any corners and trying to turn and hold the metal steady at the same time is just not ideal so I've basically strengthened this up which is going to show you in a minute how I've done it um, I've made this a lot stronger I've added a motorised system to it, so it now works off electric. You plug it in, you can foot control the speed of it, um, on off speed, uh, forwards and reverse, and again, speed control uh, very easily. Now I've converted this for around £100, pounds, um, but you can buy pre-motorised kits, but again, they're really expensive. The motorised kit to convert this, um, just to buy the kits around 500 odd pounds so it's it makes more sense just to follow the bits i've bought and put it together yourself the other thing obviously we'll uh, remove the pedal out of the way for the time being just so i can rotate this around but you'll see that at the same time i've strengthened it so you'll see hopefully on the back you should see that we've welded some 25 mil box section stitch welded Again, stitch welded across the length, but obviously keeping the throat of this machine open. Again, it's been welded down here. And then on this side, if you buy a winch motor, which is what this is, you'll have the bracket for the winch motor. So we've got the brackets welded to obviously the box section, and then it's got a strengthening plate in there. So there's no movement whatsoever. And then, yeah, on here, you could ideally do with a guard. However, I've put my own there. Uh, sticker on which is a bit tongue-in-cheek but yeah it says do not put dick which is a, a nickname for someone called richard in the uk um do not put richard in machinery <laughs> but yeah basically as long as you don't put anything in that you'll be all good um, and then i'll quickly show you on the plugs sockets over the other side of the workshop so bear with me a second Right, so obviously foot control um, is away from it slightly, but you see it's a case of just put your foot on it. Uh, need to select whether it's forward or reverse. And then you can flip it the other way, which is in reverse. It's going the opposite way. And then you've also got different speeds. Let me just zoom out very slightly if I can. It's a bit awkward trying to show it while doing the foot control, because obviously the foot control is not actually on the floor because I've got the cable stretched. But you'll see that speed as well. have it really 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 slow that's good for when you're doing kind of tight corners and then you can obviously speed it up so yeah that's how it works obviously like i say um the reason it was so awkward is because i've had to kind of hand use the foot control here um but yeah very easy um, obviously the bench that it's sat on currently would be near uh, some kind of electrical source i'd run an extension but obviously i'm only doing a youtube video but yeah the way i've got it set up is i've got forwards off reverse so obviously it can go both ways and then a speaker control on here and then the on and off switch is by the pedal but the pedal also works if you part hold it it does slow it down so you can technically control it by there or you can just keep tapping it on and off get this set to a speed you have with tap it on and off uh, but yeah it works beautifully well Obviously, however you mount it is up to you. I've mounted it to this modular desk, um, or it will be mounted when I use it. It's a case of just chucking it in and chucking some bolts through where they need to go. So yeah, let's get on to making it. Right, so uh, I've got one of these cheap 
kind of swage, bead rollers, uh, Jenny wheel things, whatever you want to call it. Um, and basically I'm motorising it on the cheap if possible. Um, so I'm going to strengthen this up because it's, it's good by hand, but there's a few modifications with putting some extra steel on it, which will strengthen it. Um, I need to make sure there's kind of no play in a lot of it. So I'm going to strengthen it up. But for the motor side of the things, um, this is obviously the UK, but the states will be the same. Uh, I've got a plastic waterproof box. Doesn't necessarily need to be plastic uh, or waterproof. It just needs to be something to kind of protect um, what we've got going in. So I've got a power supply. This is off eBay. Um, I've gone for a 12 volt, 20 amp power supply. Um, obviously it's the inputs 100 volts or 240 obviously we're in the uk so we're using 240 which is actually technically 230 um, and then that converts it to 12 volts 20 amp so we've got that as a power supply and the cheapest thing that i could find which is already geared down because a lot of people need to gear stuff down this is already going to be a very slow motor is a winch a cheap i think it's about 40 pound um a cheap winch motor they normally class as a like an atv motor because of this kind of handle which i'm not using i'm just going to cut off and use some of the wire um, so yeah for around about um i think it was under 100 pound but say 80 pound just to be safe for, for this stuff here uh, and the roller i bought a while ago probably for about 100 150 pounds with obviously all the wheels and stuff um so yeah should be everything there bar obviously some scraps of steel and stuff to uh to make a motorized version just the motor kits on their own i was looking at how much it would be to convert this um, and i was looking at 400 pounds just for the motor setup which is basically these things here that someone else has already done so uh, first thing i do is disassemble this so i want this bracket so you'll see me taking this apart um, and then we're going to work out how to mount the motor onto the end of this shaft Right, so I'm just going to talk through the parts. You've got obviously a plug. We've got some free core cable, which is a flex cable. We've got an on and off foot pedal switch, which is a 230 volt switch. And this was purchased off Amazon for eight pounds. There's similar ones on eBay. They may look a bit different, but as long as it's a sturdy switch pedal for switch and electric on and off, that'll be fine. So you need a pedal. The most expensive part, other than obviously the original part of the swage itself, is the motor. Now I've gone for a 12 volt winch motor. The reason being it's already geared down to the right kind of speeds and because it's not a brushless motor, it's very easy to control the voltage that goes to it and by uh, reducing the voltage or increasing the voltage will reduce or increase the speed so it's a very easy way of controlling it and it will obviously last a long time because it's made pretty much for this setup um so yeah obviously the winch motor you'll see that this is a modified it's a bit bent on this bit because it was a nightmare to get off but obviously the shaft is completely straight and um, this is part of where the winch wire would have sat on it's just obviously the other bits been cut off and binned away um so yeah that's the winch obviously the winch motor bracket comes with that then in this box, this is just a plastic, was a grey box. It's now kind of scratched up and black. Um, but this is just basically a big junction box for household electrics or electronics. It's kind of optional. I just wanted everything kind of hidden away in there. Um, so basically inside there is a silver box, which I'll show you in a minute. But that's basically a transformer, which transforms your power from your wall in your workshop to 12 volt. And then from that, it's literally the wires go into that. And then from that, there's some wires that come out and they go to this bit here, which is your speed controller for your motor. So they'll go in one side and then they come out from the other side and straight down to your motor. It's very simple to wire up. Um, obviously, the speed controller is already pre-wired with its own bit like this. Um, and it's obviously a it's switch, which is a two way, well, three position switch. You've got forwards, stop, reverse. Um, so yeah, they're already pretty wide, so you can't go wrong with them. Now the speed controller itself, I'll link them in a minute, but I think the speed controller was under £20 and the transformer inside was about a similar amount. It was around £100 to do it. 
um, and around £200 for the beadwork itself. So £300, which isn't bad at all. Um, when you consider a pre-made motorised one is well over £1,000. I think the cheapest one I could see was about £1,300. Um, or if you was to buy this for your 200 odds and buy the conversion kit, that's another £500 usually. So I've done this for around £300 all in. Um, obviously your silly sticker is uh, another couple of quid if that's something that you want to put on um, and then obviously yeah some square uh, some box section just for strengthening that up uh, but i would do that anyway even if you're not motorizing it i'd still kind of strengthen this up because they're not kind of the best until they've got a bit of strength in so i mean it works wicked now um, and it's nice and cheap which is the main thing